Okay, today we're going to do something simple, but it's rather useful. We're going to talk about how to reduce, or I'm sorry, how to remove stray hairs from a complicated background. Um, last time I talked about this, I think it was a clean, you know, paper background in the studio. Now the, the process is similar, but it's different also. Let's talk about first about why we need the process to be different. What, what are the limitations with the tools that we currently have? The most common one that we will be using or that people normally use is the healing brush tool. And this brush is it's great because you can, it can redo, it can use an algorithm to m merge the, what you're copying, what you're healing with the average of the background. But as you can see here, when it comes to edges, it grabs that edge and it averages it to, to the surrounding. So that creates this kind of messy looking, smudgy uh, looking effect that we don't want. And it starts looking, you know, cheap and, and not very professional. So that's out of the way. And, or you could do it, but you will have to go in really small and it will take you a long, long time to get um, to get good results with the, with this tool in this in this situation. So another tool that we can use is just use the straight up uh, clone tool. The clone tool does is it is just a carbon copy of what you're copying from and out, and, and so this doesn't involve any kind of algorithm. It might work well depending on the different variables. And sometimes you might get away with it, but there are places where you won't. So right now, I I might be able to get away with this in this scenario, because the background is so blown, you know, out of focus, that you won't see uh, that much of a difference. But when the background is not so much blown out of focus, the cloning brush tool, you might be able to get away with just using the a clone brush tool but for this scenario this technique that I'm going to show you it works with every case and this just using the cloning tool as I was just doing won't work with a gradient in a background so say you have a studio background of paper and you have a light and you have a gradient it won't uh, the cloning brush tool won't help you in that scenario okay so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use frequency separation so if you don't know about that, I'm going to put a link in the description. I figure most people who have been watching my channel probably already know about it. Essentially, what I want to do is I want to be able to tackle the color of the actual hair sticking out and the texture differently so that I can be more general and quicker and also more efficient and more professional. OK, so I'm just going to go and I'm going to start a new frequency separation because I didn't use it for, I didn't use frequency separation for this photo. I know you're seeing it weird because I have other layers on top of it, but you usually you will see the normal frequency separation look that you'll get right now. So here you have several options. If you're already using frequency separation to retouch the skin and everything else, then just use the settings that you've been using. But if you're doing a new frequency separation set, or if you're doing it exclusively for this, then I recommend you to use a really small radius just enough so that we can pull the noise of the of the background of the image out of out of the low frequency and that's it so right now i'm at 2.3 and i think that's where i'm going to leave it so not super strong i just want to be able to fix the, the the color and then add in the noise fix the areas that go into the noise on a, on a different layer just to be able to control those independently. That's that's all I want. So you don't need to have a really strong radius. And here I'm going to duplicate it just because I'm I got used to it. Every time I I do stuff like this, I, I duplicate uh, the the layer because I'm going to use the the mixing brush tool. So what we're going to do is basically just grab the mi mixing brush tool. These settings we're going to are going to vary again. They're vary on on the megapixel on how big is it with the subject, but I try to keep everything really low except the load. So the wetness, the mix, and the flow, I keep them low. And I keep all of the, these two active, which basically re, re the, 
the brush every time you press or unpress. Okay, and I'm just gonna sample from an area in general close to it and just paint over it. And I'm gonna paint following the flow, trying to keep a, a good mix of following the way the hair is going. Um, so it's going up and down and how the the boca or the out of focus area is going so I'm gonna do kind of like do circles and also do do circles and also do up and down if that makes sense so think of it as if you were like I don't know like painting with your fingers almost and I'm just getting rid of this So if you if you were doing this on a gradient on a studio, you will just uh, I will try to do it a little bit bigger, a little bit less hard, just so you can go over the edge, and then just go up and down, up and down, up and down with an even lower um, flow. Anyways, have a hard brush. So this just uh, removes the hair texture from the outside okay I'm just gonna keep going it's good to zoom out as always to make sure that it makes sense that it looks like it belongs in the you know with the rest of the of the image um later we can w when we're working on the high frequency separation we can keep that high frequency layer on um, and still work on the low frequency just to see how the actual final image looks like it's it's harder to do it when we have the high frequency separation off but obviously it's useful to have it off to know what we're doing so that's that's another general tip for working with frequency separation. Work on the low frequency with the high frequency off and then bring the high frequency on, back on, and just redefine all the details that you might have missed when you had it off. Okay, we're almost done. I'm gonna try to do my best. When I record these things, I try to do the best quality that I can without, um, without boring you all with doing something super slow process but just understand that this will be probably a little bit slower if I if I wasn't recording okay now I'm just going to like I said kind of like bring this in okay so I remove that that was easy I'm gonna bring my high frequency separation back on, I mean my high frequency layer back on, and let's duplicate this one as well. So to work on a duplicate of the high frequency, just duplicate the layer, clip the new layer to the high frequency layer, and change the blending mode of that copy to normal mode. Okay. And now, now this is a little bit easier. We just need to copy all this noise information into this area right here so for that i'm going to use the clone stamp tool i'm going to use a rather hard or hard-ish uh, uh, brush and just click and drag and remember i made a mistake it needs to be set to current layer only when you're working with high frequency and right now we're seeing an edge at the end, um, we're gonna fix that on a, on a different step outside of frequency separation. So I am noticing it and I know that I'm going to fix it. Don't worry. This background that I have right now, it's fairly equally lit. If you have, I had to do this recently with a client where it had the green foliage in the background and the foliage had different contrast. It was, you know, green and it was going into the shadows and the shadows had more noise than the highlights so if that's the case be careful of, of where you're sampling from the the noise um 
it's not the case in here, so I can't really show you, but just know that it it might have different noise levels depending on what you're sampling from. But for what we see, what we can obviously see right now, it's pretty much evenly with my sample image. Okay, now we have a basic, you know, effect right now, but we can polish it a little bit further. I'm going to close down this frequency separation group. I'm going to open a new layer and every time I work with edges of hair, I pretty much do this. So whether it's masking, masking in, masking out, or in this case, getting rid of, of stray hairs, I'm going to go to my custom brush. So I'm going to go here and I know here's the last one and there's nothing special about this brush. Just uh, go to the brush settings and do shape dynamics and change the size jitter so that you get a rough kind of like a rough brush and obviously um, some some spacing and some pressure sensitivity okay so what this brush allows me to do and, and if not you can just use a regular regular brush I'm gonna sample from this edge area right here this highlight that was caught that uh, where the hair got caught and I'm just gonna manually add in hairs and for some reason I'm not painting oh because I'm not on the regular brush tool first of all make sure you're using the, <laughs> the correct brush tool okay I'm gonna be yeah so I'm gonna be an opacity I'm gonna reduce the opacity to 80 so that just so that it looks a little bit more realistic and I don't even know if you're catching this on the on the stream with the compression and stuff like that but I'm I'm just going I'm gonna increase this size a little bit. No, that's too much. Actually, I'm gonna go to 90% opacity. Let me grab a little bit lighter. Sometimes I feel like I should go lighter just so that I see the difference. That's too light. Okay, that's better. <sighs> Let me start over because I didn't like that. Okay, so this is basically just to and keep resampling because it gets lighter or or darker in different areas or it might um, this is just to hide the the effect of of what we were just doing You're gonna see the before and after. You see, it just it blends it in a little bit better. I don't think it's needed as much on this side as it is on the other. In here. Okay, and now let me undo that one. Now I'm going to filter blur, so that's on its own layer. So I'm gonna do a Gaussian blur, and just a tiny bit of a Gaussian blur, just to make it so half of a pixel, 0.4, not even half of a pixel of a blur, and that adds that extra layer of of professionalism I guess to the to the effect so anyways that was a quick way of reducing 
or removing stray hairs out of a photograph with a complicated background. And it's the exact same process with the with the gradient background. You will just do be doing your brushes so that it flows accordingly to the to the gradient to the gradient background. And even so, even more than that, you could, for example, if you're on a gradient, you dupl duplicate the low frequency layer, and you don't have to mind if you go over. So let's say, for example, it's this big. You wouldn't have to mind if you go over the subject. You can then later grab a, a, a layer mask and just mask out where you went over the subject for the sake of having the smooth transition. So that's how you will do it with a complicated background. That's how you will do it with a gradient studio background. And it's so easy. It will be much quicker if I didn't have to be explaining it. But I hope you guys learned something and I see you guys in a couple days.